Hello viewers, welcome to Mesology. In this session, I will explain the laws of inheritance which were put forward by Mendel. Sir Johann Gregor Mendel experimented with pea plants and he conducted several experiments between the years 1856 to 1863. He established many of the rules of heredity. These rules are now referred to as the laws of inheritance. Somehow, he did not gain the importance during his time of work because genetics was not well known during that time. Mendel gained recognition posthumously as the founder of modern sciences or as the father of genetics. During those years from 1856 to 63, he cultivated and tested over 30,000 pea plants, scientifically called the Pisum sativum, and recorded all his outcomes. He was fortunate that at least he got all the pure breeds of the pea plants. He started experimenting with the tall pea plant and the dwarf variety. The tall pea plant was a homozygous tall with both the genes for the height being for the tallness. Similarly, the dwarf plant was also a pure or homozygous dwarf plant. Both the genes were of the dwarf variety. Okay, what do you think would have been his expectations for the first generation offsprings? Since he crossed between the pure tall and the pure dwarf, he expected that the F1 offsprings would either be all of intermediate height or it could be that 50% of the plants would be tall and the other 50% would be dwarf. But surprisingly, all the plants in the F1 generation were tall. He truly got confused with the results that were in front of him because they did not meet his expectations. Then he decided to cross the F1 offsprings and upon crossing the F1 offsprings he could indeed see the other hidden variety was also present in the F2 offsprings. Then he concluded, okay, the one that gets expressed in the F1 generation of offsprings is actually the dominant character. And that which does not express in the F1 are considered to be the recessive. So, the law of dominance was established. Where the law of dominance says that out of a pair of contrasting characters present together, only one is able to express itself, while the other remains suppressed or hidden. The one that expresses is the dominant character, and the other, which is unexpressed or hidden, is the recessive. The recessive character can express itself only when both the genes are of the recessive type, that is, in a homozygous recessive condition. Mendel never proposed them as laws. He put them forward as hypothesis. Until in 1900, they were rediscovered by the three scientists, Karl Korins, Shermark and Hugo de Vries. 
Karl Korins had arrived at it independently. So, he converted the postulates into laws. But these laws were not universally true. Occasionally, both alleles can be co-dominant or incomplete dominance with intermediate phenotypes are also seen, may be rarely but yet true. Other deviations that include are the multiple alleles, epistasis, the polygenic inheritance who are deviations from the law of dominance. According to law of dominance, there should have been only two varieties of each character. Say, for example, the height, either completely tall or absolutely dwarf. But we see different ranges of height. Similarly goes with the skin color. We do not see only the albino and the negro. There are several more shades of the skin color which is possible. But this was not proposed by the law of dominance. Next is the law of segregation. This is also known as the purity of gametes. The two members of a pair of factors that is alleles, they separate during the formation of the gametes. They do not blend but segregate or separate into different gametes. The gametes combine together by random fusion at the end of the zygote formation. In other words, the law of segregation can be viewed as in a hybrid union, the members of an allelic pair that remains together without mixing, diluting or altering each other and they separate during the formation of the gametes. But there is always a chance for these gametes to combine together by random fusion at the time of the zygote formation. Let us take for example we do see different shades of the skin color. We also see the varying ranges of the height of an individual, whether it's of a plant or of the humans or of any other animal. Let us take the example of the sex chromosomes. For males, it is X and a Y. And for females, it is obviously 2X. Let us consider the example of the male sex chromosomes, the X and the Y. So, during the formation of the gamete, which is a haploid one, it will either have only an X or have only an Y to transfer it during the zygote formation. So, if the X of the male unites with the X of the female, it produces a daughter. While if the Y of the male combines with the X of the female, it produces a son. So, so the X and the Y chromosomes that remain together in a male do not influence each other. When they segregate during gamete formation, there are likely chances that they will combine by random fusion at the time of zygote formation. This law holds universally true and this law can be well explained under a monohybrid cross. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, do not forget to give a thumbs up, share it with your friends who may find it useful and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you still haven't done so. Thank you for watching.